Mudamaki wa damaki wa tura atene na atene mubwe guru na adi. Nito na gada onyige ni uduogo uro kiri akumagara ni yanaidiwe. Nito na watu kinya gei karo gei kimo damaki muga ni tora kuri rogo sho. Nito na sho kia gada ni udo adi kuiria watu hete ma ito asiro tuwa koroto inake. Mudamaki muga ni tora kena ni kumenya ati ni ukoleto umuto ukoleti ya dini wa rogo ya doro rohavi tekiyo. Na mudamaki mwe gani yaro ite baleri ya jaga mudamaki na akahota na lito la kuli rogo sho. Tu kia jere lia iki nyari rege ya kudu kumu huru kia mudamaki mwe gani mwe wake. Tu hoe utora na naidwe tu toho goli ya mudamaki mwe gani. Mifa goyo ode ya ibere ito tome na ya na moko ini maku. Ite kira mudamaki mwe gani kuigere la na negeze ya tuke ya kuli ekele la kuli gana na ole ya wede ya mudamaki mwe gani. Tunere kirelia moko ini maku. Mudama kimuwega. Toge koho ya ona wale ya tutigire na kuhule ya tuumire. Ona odhina abena na koma menyerera. Na negeza tole makora. Matuwe terile mudama kimuwega. Na negeza toho hote kwenyita nila. Toka shoko kia gada mudama ki. Ona ni udo wa kanida. Ni udo wale uli gali gete ya omuwe wito. Mudama kimuwega na eka hota ko participate mwadhani. Netora shoko kia gada. Ona ni udo wa famire. O kuli o mudo o mudo kuli gani ite mire ni ite ite bina abere na kumeka wego na kumaradi ma na kuma udo mudo thoma na yana moko ini maaku na kugera kuri tole wi veru ya mudo ni amano kuri tuji su Kristo tu ana tosho kia gada. Amina. Okay ah thank you mono brother maina namze ukai ada family ukai. Mwega ukaireu Moshe moda kamono Riri wakone mubore Ihi nega tonya kuo Hera shia kono dahafu di Yoshia to higa tuwega Ike noshia kwa tutioe Ihi nega tonya kwa Ado akwa matie hagyake Hago tire nagde na Wagoro ona wamwere Hihi nega tonya kuo Eh habisi area Koho tanke Wakimani Mita bisi adina hale abere Da Eh 
shaitani Thegyo mono mamwajeri na mamwashiro atenema Jesu ni aturiheire thiri uri atore naguo Thegyo tondo washigo jega ici mwathi ambe gutumereria tugachokia gatho mono tondo ni mathire wothe twari naguo Jesu Kristo ni arehia ria mutharafi ni Calvary ko turi andu matai na thiri twetire Jesu nigetha oke atoyire Thegyo mono ga yitu amurathime tondo warugorwega Ah damenya wagari na wajiro okure muri mami amuratuona thini wa igogoni nire wajiro na wagari ah guko ni kuokwao no matina to ko hemo hemo na idwe koguo okure mari wagari ya US na ke wajiro e kure ya Britain turanyitane hamwe nao ona ona turama nyita ugeni thini wa igogona dia to konore muthenya wa muthi ah mahinda maya ndede da kunyita kanitha ah wa S7 the day defense to ugeni mwake haa bere magoshe ga inaru ebo kanitha wa 7th day adventist daiga kanitha wa 7th day adventist toda maada mwa adventist toho othe oke haa haa tukoshe ga yutu inaru ebo tafadhali ukai haa na ihenya ni thodo wa madha nigeza tuwale kia tukoko na maudu maige na oku negera tuku negera kanitha nigeza madhiye na bere na igogona
kadhalika hiyo there na umoke magose gainaru hivyo thank you mna mzee na tumwe kahida kau gwesia ni kila mata wikite Mwagita gika ni kya gikoro ni mwihokete gai goro inesia nyu mwihokei na nie mwihoke mosie kwa fafa kwena sikaro na le unegothie kumothondekera na thuthosia jukende mugire mosie ni muthondeke twihareirie guthie gutonya kwa mwathani ni atwira twikarie goro si twire theru na kyo githi magya gwithamba ni sakara media uburi Nashio irio shiaro gedoni sakara media ekare Geza gaza ge igoro sia nyuna mweke mata wa manyu maguta Boti gairie hanini togero Soro wa mwaza nini uka Wana mbuge rerio nende eigu wa igoro Na ato mwane age okana matu Moshe me moza deke Tue hori go diego tonya kwa Mwaza nini atue raga Tue gari ya goro si toi reza Akyo gedi magya gweza ba Nesa kara media uboli na shio Irio siya roge do Nesa kara media ekaresti Mokyu gatia Degyo mwono na madhya Bero kutu heru boro wakutu umeriria Tito tika atagi kea ona nyuge ito amurathi memono muno makeria maide maya tukunegera kanitha nigetha mathie ithie na mbere elda karibu ndirenda turugame na iguru jesu sio toigane mwega tumuinire ruibororea ruinagwo managi dimoine ya kwarora igane na ba igana rimwe ria twedithiri na nijo ige turwandikite goroini sito ugwo turugame na iguru tuine ruiboru Ili utagori ya Jesu aga asoka ni dilaru ugo. Mere Jesu aga shoka tu ine. Mere Jesu aga shoka age remanage. Remanage ni mwado orya anakora.
tuku nihia na nigeza tuthie bere ya ngai na mafoya ogwo tutari kaito hoe awa muthingu na mutheru we otoraga tene na tene twakira ki bere yaku tugikwambararia tugikumiona na tugigutugeria muno nikomenya we ngai na gutiri ungi uhana tawe we wiki ne wagirie gukumio kugocho ona gutugeria tene na tene twenyi hari we tukihamuhera nikwimenya turehia Tuwaho ya kure kero wa gudheriwa na kubwa wa erunewe na nigeza udhina bae kugia na wikaro wa goro inishitu Ugeto tara na gututa wa goro ya jira inishi ya kuiri ya shirichi ya udhigu Turadhi na abere kuinea na haliwe toke shawaki ya gaza ni yomenye la ino ugiteri waku Ure otu wara nete na idhue ikero ine nyige kumahiri ya mauduma ya maha nekire Na waga kinyi ya maudu haha makinyi ya tele tole ya kuri rogo osho Tura shawaki ya gaza ni todo wago to kinyi ya haha le utole Na tuga getia uto goro ya waku le ino wa igogo na lele Tukirea bereria ginya gedere atorere kereria mwadhani niwe tweta utweke mutongoria witu utweke wagutwarithia maodo na matweke makugashira ni tondu wa ugoshi wa ritwa riaku na shirathi mo cia kwitweke cia gutwara na ari othe mega ikaro ine geke o hamwe na thayo waku utweke wagutawara na makiria maodo mothe utweke wakwiguria thaini wa kiugoge akurira kereria rio ni dugata yaku na nigetha tuigue mugambo waku na tukiumage ikaro geke o mwe witu akorwo Eno doe rutete wago kukuha kuhiriria na kukumanya we. Legio niko iwana goto ili lako higia. Niyama ya toho ya nawete kio. Togele yihari jeso. Au shari wa vigu ito toho ya nawete kia. Amen. Na najira ya muanya no nyede. Konyita ikudisiga na ogeni. Niyudo wa madho ori ya madhiete. Na jirage tuyomu no noho we. Adwa family marugame. Family members marugame. Na di mudo aga kerwe ha atuwa lile Family mebo umwe wao aruga me atuge idhie Umwe wanyo no aruga me atuge idhie No atuge idhie hado hasio agi Aiminto ni mukiru uga mete Mwereaga Kutako wa saimu ni jogo na wamu za maina Niene nie toraro Toraro manere ile na arek Alexander Mungai Uyo wetiro Thegi umuno awa Na family ni thegi umuno ikara hithi Mugira family yate ya Kani dawa madhiko Nalibu sana na nituwa kena nikuwa umu ya mwena idhwe. Adoa siya uge gweda marugame ni ado itura liri. Itura liri, haikuwa uwe itura liri, ni guho ya hariyo liurugame ni guwa tukuhe mwe kiyoshio. Odi na abere kuga idhania. Yesu wa gosua. Tegu ni hijare ya kuweza uri awena ruga norwa mwari wa idhavitu. Titu kaga. Kwena mbosye mwega Nagowe na niromo Biko mina ere Toka giri o maithari Gekwone gegadhira Ruona Mary was born on June 22, 1948, as the firstborn child of Daniel Mbeke Muthondu and Damaris Nyakenyo Mbeke in Mangu, Kenya. Siblings. She has two living siblings, Valentine J. Nyambura, who lives in UK, and Francis Njenga in Menengai. Mary was a very hardworking woman. She would juggle between her work in healthcare and farming and doing businesses. Church. She was initially a Catholic, 
She later joined the Seventh-day Adventist Church and was baptized in Kanyariri SDA Church and later transferred her membership to the Manda SDA Church where she, she served as a health ministry leader at SDA The Manda and a farm member until her death. Mary loved to preach the word of God both in Kenya and USA, and she made sure that she had passed on the SDA Bible truth to all children and grandchildren. Training and Work Mary did her primary education on White, at White Star Primary School in 1954 to 1962. She then proceeded to Bika Primary High, Bika High School in 1963 to 1966. She did her midwife training at Bika Maternity Hospital in 1967 to 1969. She then started working with her Nairobi, with the Nairobi City Commission at a clinic nurse from 1969 to 1989, where she was on rotation in various not notable hospital, hospitals in Nairobi, such as Kenyatta National Hospital, Westlands Hospital, Pumwani Maternity Hospital, Riruta Clinic, among many others. After she left Nairobi City Commission, she got a contract with Medicine Sun Frontiers in Belgium, and she was stationed at Hagadera refugee camp and worked in the capacity of maternity supervisor for refugees. She was very proud of this assignment. Sister Mary relocated to America in 2006 and stayed there for 10 years before relocating back to Kenya and transferred her membership back to the Manda SDA. Sometime in October 2022, she moved to her second home in Mwe, Mwehoko and lived there peacefully until she was admitted to KU Referral Hospital on, 20, on March 28, 2023 until her death on April 11, 2023. Her social life. Mary, relocated very, Mary related very well with people. She loved to volunteer her time helping. She loved to sing. Blue was her favorite color, and her favorite meal was gashegera, raw bananas with njahe. Health ministry was her passion. Sickness. Mary's health started to go down in 2020, and in June 2021, she got her first admission to hospital. She later went in and out of hospital a couple of times, and it was... And it, and it was marriage. Mary met her husband in late 60s and they loved and their love blo blossomed very quickly. They got married at Riruta Catholic Church on March 7, 7 19, 1970. They were married for 51 years. They were blessed with four children, that is Caroline Wanjiru, Ambrose Minor, Apollonia Wangari, and Catherine Mumbi. On March 28th, she, 28th, 2023, she, that, on March 28th, 2023, that she could, she was, she would be admitted to KU Farrell Hospital for the last time until her death in, on April 11, 2023, Revelations 14, that in then I heard the voice of, the voice, a voice from heaven saying to me, right Blessings are the dead who die in the Lord for now, from now on. Yes, says the Spirit, that they, that they may, that many, that may rest from their labor and their works may follow me.
Hello everyone. For those that don't know me, my name is Serena Wairimu-Leach, also known as Granddaughter. I would like to share with you some of the nice memories that I have of Shoshua, my grandma. I will never forget during my first trip to Kenya being super nervous to meet the family for the first time, but I will never forget the heartfelt reception that I received, the tears that were strolling down Shoshua's face, the hugs and kisses that I received, and I could see in her eyes how proud she was to be a mother and a grandmother. And let me tell you, she made no secret about how proud she was of all of her grandchildren. She always wanted the best for us. She supported our academic pursuits no matter what. And I remember many a phone call with her and she would ask, when are you going to become a professor? And when are you going to become a doctor? And it was so nice to know that whilst I was a student and studying very hard, that there was somebody who could see potential in all of us and who was willing to support us no matter what. One thing I would like to share with you all about Shosho is that she was a strong, determined and a praying woman. She would wake up at 3am, she would get on her knees and say her prayers for all of her family members and herself. And that is a testament of her character and the legacy that she leaves. Her unwavering faith meant that she loved God and she put him first no matter what, right until the very end. Her unwavering faith meant that she loved God and she put him first no matter what, right until the very end. There was nothing that could separate her from the love of God. And I feel comforted by that thought and I think we all should feel comforted by that thought going forwards. I would like to read out a text to commemorate the legacy that she leaves and hopefully it will bring comfort to all of us during this time. I'm reading from the book of Romans chapter 8 verses 35, 37 to 39. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. My grandma's faith certainly has been a testament to me and hopefully it has been to all those that are listening. And to Shosho, I love you, I miss you, sleep tight. Mungu ni mwema. Asante ni sana kwa kukuja leo kutu support. Mimi ni Wanjiro, firstborn ya mamu. Tafadhali ni patia ni dakika kumi hivi na mnisamea kwa kusema kingereza. To say that I respected mom is an understatement. She's the most influential woman in my life. A matriarch and boss lady. She was our everything. A counselor, a teacher, a cook, a chef, a farmer, a hairdresser, dressmaker, neeta. She was our nurse, our disciplinarian, our security, the strongest woman that we knew. Mom worked full time and she worked shifts, but she also would rear cattle, poultry, and cultivate food in our small subsistence farm. They paid for good schools and subsidized their income with the sale of milk and eggs, so her work bags were always very heavy. We learned to be frugal and she took a packed cooked lunch and some chai in a flask to work and we did the same to school. She milked cows. She'd send us to the market to sell surplus eggs. When there was no water, she taught me how to carry amtungi independently and I could swing amtungi onto my back with a rope. That's when we didn't have a donkey. These humbling experiences of self-sustenance and sheer greed was a lifelong lesson. One can legitimately survive in extenuating circumstances. My parents did the same on retirement. No job was too demeaning for them when they were in the US. They both built their wealth from scratch together because they both came from very humble backgrounds. Mom taught us to cultivate crops so we never went hungry. She taught me to cook from the age of about six. I would step on a stool to reach to the gas cooker. That's if the parents were about. And if they weren't, she taught me how to make a wicked jiko fire. 
eating from fork or farm to fork meant that we're still reaping the benefits health benefits of organic farming to date she made sure we ate a hot meal in the evening when she was not on a night shift, no matter how tired we was. Unajwaile sleepwalking. Mimi, I could sleep eat. <laughs> Standing. The commute from Nairobi schools was quite long and sometimes it took over two hours um, because um, the buses then prioritized adults over children because children paid less fare. I was a disciplined firstborn. I could hand wash all the clothes of the whole family of six. I could clean, polish, and clean and polish floors until they could skid and slide on them. I learned that we could be poor or one can be poor, but when you're clean, you look rich. I could get my siblings to school and back, and that was a minimum of four buses through Nairobi. I did lose them a few times to mom's horror. Mom and dad's own commute from work uh, mostly mom because she didn't like driving dad took the car mostly meant that we had to learn to do chores and she taught us to so she taught me how to soak wash and iron her uniform and dad's shirts without ruining them mom knitted thick jumpers for herself dad and all the children's school jumpers so we weren't cold on our way to school she also taught me how to knit and crochet cast off cast on i would remember her saying she made sure we were smart so we weren't too conspicuous amongst our more affluent peers. She bought herself a couple of single sewing machines and then got someone else to cut the patterns so then she would sew them together whilst we wore some and then she'd sell the others. She was entrepreneurial and the rest of my siblings are such. She would wash all our hair, oil it and then plate it in neat little lines. She ensured we washed properly and all women know what I mean. All women and girls know what I mean. She taught us to apply body lotion. We actually shone and we still take pride in our appearance today. I will never forget the first time she took me to her hairdresser to have had my hair straightened and styled. I felt so special. Mom was clean, she smelled really nice and she had a thing about brushing teeth and she kept her own teeth till the day she died. A nurse and midwife by profession and a nurse at home and locally. We rarely went to hospital except for the more serious ailments, which was rare, maybe like intravenous treatments. She made us take cod liver oil and raw eggs. I remember regurgitating an egg back into the cup in front of her. It wouldn't stay down. She loved nursing mainly to help others. When she had no house manager at home, she took me to her workplace and I saw her forgo her lunch times to treat suffering patients. Even, the, even then, the queues in government um, hospitals and clinics were insufferable. Several times on her way home, she would be stopped by a local woman for health advice, mostly family planning, and it would be over an hour or more before she hungrily and tiredly walked back home, probably with her blood pressure through the roof. A few times I would go looking for her, and take her now lighter bags, unless on her way home she'd also done some shopping. On one of her dreams was to, was to one day um, open her own dispensary or family planning clinic, but instead she opened a Remus bookshop. And later on, um, she volunteered at a refugee camp. She also looked after the elderly, although being elderly and partially sighted herself. Her vocation was the helping ministry, and I followed in her footsteps. It was mom who got me to help beggars in Nairobi city at the age of a mere, the mere age of six. That's if I escaped the bus conductors. Later on, they started the Mary Alex Children's Hope Center with their meager pensions. Mom was the muscle behind Mary Alex and dad was the face and legs. It is for this very reason, I pledge to revive the work that they started. I understood that one not need a, needs not a lot of money but just a willing heart. Mom came to our school sports days and parents' days. We were so proud of her, so we told her what to wear. She participated in the parents' races and she was fast. She taught us how to handle bullies and, one, and once she drove me to school and told me to tell a bully that she was sitting in the car, she had taken a machete with her to convince me that she would sort this person out. Little did I know that she had no intention of going to jail, but this little ruse convinced the bully to stop bullying me. 
She was also cautious of city crime and we would, she would make me take my cardigan off if we left the bank to avoid being followed. Another time she harshly, harshly reproached a matatu thug when I caught him trying to open her handbag. From the little that she had, even when she was ill, she gave her children, her family, especially her brother and her parents. You would never know who she was helping. She kept it very private. Sometimes if there was a local bereavement, she would ask if we would give her some money so that she could send them to the family. No matter how her children turned out, she often say, said, Hiti de moana. She always said she loved us and she would indiscriminately thank us all even when only one of us had done something. Education was of utmost import in our home and valued by their own parents. They taught us the sacrifice that in the formative years, they taught us, the sacrifice, they taught us that sacrifice in the formative years pays dividends in adulthood. They paid for extra tuition during our holidays. Mom took me to find high school plays when I refused Pangani girls because I didn't like their uniform. She then took me to Jamhuri High School. She did plead with the head to accept me. <laughs> that was the type of woman she was, Jamhuri High School. She did plead with the head to accept me. <laughs> that was the type of woman she was. This notion has been imparted to our offspring and my daughter who is now a high school teacher and my daughter is now a high school teacher. If you got a degree, they would ask for a master's. If you got a master's, they'd ask for a PhD. Mom was head smart very avant-garde. She talked about things I only hear people valuing today. Things like solar, solar, power, solar panels in the 70s and 80s. When I wanted to do secretarial, she would encourage me to become a bilingual um, secretary or um, learn shorthand and teletext so that I would be set apart from others. I took up French and although I never used it professionally, it comes in handy when I'm trying to pick other languages. Mom was a sponge. Nothing escaped her eyes or her mind. As she lost her sight, she could still work, do her home chores, and when confined to her bed, she knew what was going on around her. Many didn't believe that she was blind. She could discriminate our voices over the phone and summon for help for dad. She was also an info bank way before Google. Mom and dad's marriage was solid, but not without tests. A handsome couple they were, but, I could not, but if I could take a leaf out of mom's book, it would be how not to act jealous. If mom was upset with dad, she could be heard saying, hey, the wahanjiro, the kewe koguo, which means, hey, Shiro's dad, why did you do that? If dad swore because they got saved, they, don't, they didn't do that anymore. But when he did, mom would ask us to mimic him. And that soon, soon stopped dad. <laughs> he would look at mom like, where were I don't remember them arguing, but I'm sure they did secretly. Nor did I hear them fight. Dad and mom, dad loved mom, and mom, although strong willed, lovingly respected him until his death in December 2021. You couldn't borrow a spoon or anything without either consulting the other. They were cleaved and acted in unison. A person would approach one thinking they'd get a different answer. To their disappointment. Mom and dad were playful and always laughing. Mom had the most infectious laugh, it was quite loud and she was also quite jocular, which always managed to break dad's serious face into a smile. They had a small circle of lifelong friends and didn't mix much as they preferred family life. That's a trait I have inherited. In the evening they would sit together on the same city and they enjoy enjoyed each other's company and did many things together. Up, and re up until um, the end. Dad was quite distraught when mom took ill and he'd asked the carers to get him up and take him to her bedside and he watched her helplessly as she suffered. He was also quite distraught when she was admitted into Medihill and he famously said, that's mine. <laughs> Whilst partially blind, dad would light the gas cooker and mom would make chapatis, imagine that. She would wake up at night to care for dad as his Parkinson's was giving him nightmares. A cold man, Pa, Bonnie and Clyde, they were always together, even when they were apart and now they rest together. 
just a mere 1.5 years apart or one and a half years apart. We couldn't bear to be apart. When mom recovered from, from her first stroke, she defiantly said, I am not leaving him behind. But the most precious and priceless thing that they have taught us was faith. Mom would ask us when we were very small to recite this uh, prayer in the car because the car, the car was skidding in the mud in Agishali when she was forced to drive us to school because we were too little. It was something like heart of Jesus, ocean of love and mercy and thee. We implore thy whole goodness and kindness, something like that. Another time, mom was a soul searching and she came back home with a sort of muddy um, dress. It was custard colored, broadly on clay dress, two piece dress. And she'd been baptized in a, in a muddy stream. Another time, some people were invited to pray for us in our home and I can remember them bashing our heads and pressing my eyes. They never came again. She would also send me to other churches to bring some spiritual in intel back. Then she found the truth in Adventism and Daddy followed. They encouraged us to attend Kanyarede SDA, but I rebelled. Simna Jua Mambo's at Teen Homers. Weh. It is read, train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he should not depart from it. I eventually got baptized in 2009. My Serena Wairimo followed in 2012, and all my siblings also have been baptized too. Some of mom's close friends were also converted as a result of her evangelism. I believe a crown of jewels with several stars awaits her. She maintained good spirits amidst heavy trials, and angels encompassed and ministered to her. I know she told me that after recovering from her first stroke, she was no longer scared of dying. Our queen mother sleeps. An amazing woman, a formidable warrior, no taller than five foot five inches. A giant whose only weapon was her faith. Unstoppable by nothing except death. I not only learned to love her, but to also cherish the chastisement of my childhood to honor her as in the fifth commandment, considering how I have turned out. I would have loved more time with her and even planned to come over end of this May to celebrate her 75th birthday in June the 2nd. But God had other plans. Money was tight for us, but our parents always understood how we prioritized their health needs. We shall see them again and at one of those 12 pearly gates, all transformed with healthy, ageless bodies when Christ bursts through those clouds. They shall finally live in mansions built with no human hands and riches no one can steal. Mom has left resilient children, even if it doesn't seem so right now. We will miss her terribly, but her memory is forever indelibly forged on our minds. She hung on, she fought hard, she loved us to the end, but she cannot hear us or receive anything from us anymore, but we gave her our best. It is with immense gratitude that I thank all the doctors, nurses, pharmacists, physiotherapists, and auto -hub equipment, all the carers from the various agencies of a period of three and a half years, all handymen, taximen, ambulance men, and others, her friends, her family, some of whom I wouldn't know, from Waidaka, her sister, Auntie Jane, for you listen to me go on and on and on as we reminisced about your sister and my mom whilst you were suffering yourself. Uncle Frank Jenga, Adoni and the Waidaka folks, Thamanda SDA Church, Asante Nisana, Marambili, Asante Nisana, our relatives, including dad siblings, for showing up again. Thank you so much. We notice. My friend and Rose, wow. and Rose, I've burnt your ears out. You've been so good and so strong for me. I will never forget, and I can't repay that. And I thank Judy for going that day to hospital and giving me one last moment to tell mommy that I loved her. Thanks, Judy. Thanks, Sharon, Nottingham SDA, for praying with me. 
for encouraging me. Thanks, Naomi, for saying that I can call you anytime. And thanks to some of my workmates for listening to me without interrupting, just listening. And I'm thanking you, generally, those who are here today, for all your contributions, for just being here. I don't know what you've done, Lord. But I'm praying that Mubariki wa Zaidi. And finally, for the living know that they will die, but the dead know nothing. They have no further reward and their name is forgotten. Their love, their hate, their jealousy have long since vanished. Never again will they have a part in anything that happens under the sun. Therefore, I couldn't talk to mom, but I'm just saying that was our mom. So, but I'll say good night because she sleeps. Sleep well, mommy, and see you on that morning. My only beloved sister, who has gone to silent blood, where you can no longer hold my hand like you used to while guiding me to school and hold me when I was sad. We were, we were two of us until our beloved young brother was born. You taught me a lot when we lay outside counting stars. When our parents had gone to bed, to me, my love for you will always be a treasure to me and my, to me and my daughter. I will always remember your kindness and unique smile. That's what I will always smile back than be sad. Nyaitereke, nickname Nyaitereke, Jane. Rest in peace. Today, I'm here to honor you and to thank God for giving me the privilege to have not only met you, but also Baba Shiro back in the year 2020. Albeit not in the best way that I would have wished it to be, but we met in Medihel Hospital, Parklands, Nairobi. On the plea of Shiro, she sought special medical care for both you and her dad. And being at a time of lockdown, due to the coronavirus, flights were grounded, and so was she in the UK. But that did not stop her determination to seek quality health care for you. Nor did the government cafe in place. Arriving in an ambulance, there was no doubt in the doctor's minds that you needed a few days of hospitalization. While Babashiro was reluctantly discharged alone. I'll never forget how Shiro would follow up your progress daily with the hospitals and the nurses. She would call me and ask me updates about you. And she still made sure she was also checking on your dad who was in the house and impatiently waiting for you to join him back in the house. When you arrived, you were in a lot of pain. But I guess angels were always on your bedside watching over you. Because every day, your health status report was coming out better and better. And in a few days, you were ready for discharge. The doctors were very pleased. Oh, I remember that video call between the lead Dr. Mahapatra and Shiro as he summarized the results that came from numerous tests that had been done on her. He highlighted one illness after another and after another and Shiro broke down before he could finish. But you, you were strong as you listened on you had the fight in you mama shiro the doctors they had treated you but the healing that was only god doing the miracles 
As evening approached, you prepared to go back home. I came to wish you a quick recovery and a safe trip back to the house. You were a woman of strong faith, a woman of God, and you asked that we pray. And in the softest voice, you bestowed blessings on me and blessings on your children. I'll never forget those words. I tried to hold back the tears so you wouldn't see. I wasn't as strong as you are, but they sneaked down my cheek. How I admired your children for having such a wonderful and amazing mom. As I dashed out with my coffee pass in hand, little did I know that we just said goodbye. Till we meet again, Mama Shiro. Till we meet again. You have fought the good fight and finished the race. Rest well, Mama Shiro. We loved you, but God loved you more. Your loving daughter's friend, and Rose. A tribute to Mama Shiro, my best friend's mom. Dear Mama Shiro, firstly, allow me to thank God for you because it is through you that you brought forth a wonderful daughter and best friend to me, Caroline Wanjiro Mongai, who I met in high school that was decades ago and she has remained a special and close friend to me to date. Yumuno and Adorocas in Yudoaro, Boruega, Rago to Heki, Rigidero. The Nari de Tocona and Mukori Wau, Mukori Vito. Nehi Daria Kuiwa, Dominia Gai, Na No Hamuenani, Orani, Tapas Togani, Adina Berego to Heki, Okia Modani. Sa Caribusana Pasta, Natuka Nafasi, Ni Piana Saram Zango, Wawata Wario Fika Hapa. Ebu ni wasalimie katika jina la Yesu. Bwana asifiwe. Naomba kama una mkono tafadhali unisalimie. Bwana ni mwema. And all the time. Eh jina langu 
inaitwa John e, Kemadhi Kabenya Nichukue nafasi nitumie muda mchache e, jambo la kwanza ni peane pole zangu kwa mara nyingine kwa familia hii ni familia kubwa kuna wale wako ngambo kuna wale wako huku Kenya na kuna wale ambao tuko na wao hapa so wote na peana pole zangu ninaomba Mungu wa mbinguni akaweze kuleta amani katika mioyo yenu na wafariji na akae na nyinyi wakati ambapo majirani wameondoka wamerundi makwao nyumbani Mungu wa mbinguni asiwaachilie Wakati mwingine tunakuja hapa tunaongea tunasema pole sana kwa sababu ya kuachwa na mpendo wenu Lakini kama hujahusika au hujafiwa ni maneno unaongeanga tu bure Hebu niulize swali ambao sio nzuri sana Mimi mimi sina mama nilifiwa na mama Hebu niona kama kuna mwingine amewahi pata bahati mbaya akaachwa na mpendwa aidha mtoto aidha mzee aidha lakini sio anti watu wa karibu mimi nasema sina mama hebu nione mwingine amewahi achwa asanti asanti so mnaelewa kile ninasema unapo achwa na mtu wa karibu sana unakuwa dunia nyingine ijapokuwa tunakuja tunasema pole Mungu akapatie nguvu uko dunia ingine. Lakini ni Mungu anaokutoa katika dunia ingine na anakaa na wewe na anakupatia faraja na kipekee. Kanisa tunashukuru kwa sababu kutoka siku ya Ijumamosi, siku ya Ijumapili na hata jana tumekuwa tukikusanyika masaa ya jioni katika hema hili wajiri ya maombolezi wajiri ya kusoma maneno ya kutiana nguvu na siku ya leo sina sina mambo mengi e, ninahubiria watu ambao walio hai siku ya leo ninahubiri nikihubiria watu ambao walio hai kwa sababu ndio wataweza kusikia kile ambacho ninasema e, Ebu nione ni wangapi wanaamini wako hai siku ya leo? Yaani kuna wengine hawaamini kama mko hai. O wanatembea lakini hawaamini kama wako hai. So ninamaanisha wale ambao wako hai siku ya leo. Wakiwa hapa kwa sababu ninaona tuna tuna mtandao ama wakiwa mbali ninaongea na watu ambao wako hai kwa sababu mama yetu ndanda yetu mpendwa wetu mahubiri ya siku ya leo hayawezi kumubandilisha hayawezi hawezi kusikia hawezi lakini sisi tulio hai wale ambao tunaongea tunasikia ndio tunafaindika na tunasaindika na mahubiri haya e, nitaomba msomaji akaweza kunisomea E, ndugu yangu dodo naomba ukaweza kunisomea mafungu magwili matatu ili tukaweze kumaliza ninaomba munipatie muda mchache muno e, kitabu cha mwanzo moja mstari wa 25 e, na mstari wa 26 na anapotafuta e, sisi wachungaji wa kanisa la Adventist ni vigumu huone uko na kanisa moja. Mimi niko na makanisa saba. Sababu hatuko wengi. Wachungaji sio wengi. So niko na makanisa saba. Ninaanzia Kiamba, ninaenda pale Kamandora, ninaenda hapa Ngecha, ninamalizia Nyadhona, na Damanda, na Gatimo. Hapa. Yes. Ninaomba unisomee msomaji. Mwanzo moja 25 na 26. E, soma 
Mungu akafanya mnyama wa mwitu kwa jinsi zake. Soma 26 anza hapo. Mungu akasema, "Yes, na tumfanya mtu kwa mfano wetu, mm-hmm. kwa sura yetu, uh-huh. na katawale samaki wa baharini, yes. na ndege wa angani, mm-hmm. na wanyama wa nchi yote pia, mm-hmm. na kila chenye kutambaa kitambacho juu ya nchi." Asante. Eh, jambo la kwanza ambalo ningependa wanadamu tuelewe. Kuwepo kwa mwanadamu ni mpango wa Mungu. Tumeona kamati ya umbaji ambaye ni baba Mungu, baba Mwana na baba Roho, the Trinity. Walipokuwa katika shughuli za umbaji. 25 wanyama wakaumbwa. Lakini 26 kikao wakakaa chini wakaketi. Na wakakubaliana waumbe mwanadamu kwa sura na mfano wa Mungu. Kwa hivyo mwanadamu anaishi katika dunia hii ni project ya Mungu. Hata kama sisi wanadamu tunajifungua watoto ni project ya Mungu ni uamuzi wa Mungu mwenyewe. Na huyu mwanadamu aliumbwa ako na utofauti na wanyama wengine. Kwa sababu wanyama wengine Mungu anasema na wacha ikuwe na inakuwa. Lakini alipofika kwa mwanadamu akaumba kwa sura na akatumia mikono yake kuumba na akamuumba. Ndio maandiko imesema. 27 inasema na Mungu akaumba mtu kwa mfano wake na kwa mfano wa Mungu aliwaumba mwanamume na mwanamke aliwaumba hivyo ndivyo mwanadamu aliumbwa hakuna mtu ambaye alikuja katika ulimwengu huu kwa mapenzi yake mwenyewe sisi wote ni project ya Mungu na sisi wote tunafanana na Mungu kwa njia moja ama nyingine ni kwa njia gani mwanadamu anafanana na Mungu kwa sura? Njia ya kwanza ambayo mwanadamu anafanana na Mungu Mungu anaweza ongea na Mungu huongea na mwanadamu. Usiniulize na mbona wanyama na wengine. Mimi nazungumzia wanadamu. Mwanadamu kuna kakitu aliumbwa na akawekwa na Mungu. Uwezo wa kuongea na Mungu na Biblia iko wazi utaona manabii waliongea na Mungu na hata sisi siku ya leo tunaongea na Mungu kwa maombi kwa nyimbo na kwa maono tunaongea na Mungu ni kiumbe peke yake ambacho Mungu anakiheshimu ni kiumbe ambacho kiliumbwa in a very special way Bwana Yesu asifiwe kwa hivyo usichukulie hivi hivi ninaomba uelewe katika ulimwengu na katika umbaji wewe umeumbwa in a very special way na Mungu anajua unaishi katika dunia hii na wakati mwanadamu alianguka dhambini mahali ambapo kifo kinakuja kwa sababu ya upendo mkubwa ye Mungu akatuma Yesu kutoka mbinguni na akakuja bila kutumana na akakuja mwenyewe na akakuja mwenyewe Sijambeni unaona unaona Mungu penda. So ninaomba unapoishi katika ulimwengu huu uelewe ya kwamba wewe ni project ya Mungu na hakuna mtu ambaye uliumba wewe katika hapa duniani. Jambo la pili ninaomba tuishi kuheshimu aliyetuumba. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Uishi kumheshimu aliyekuumba. Ninajua sisi hapa tuko na watoto wale ambao hawana watoto wako na mpango wa kupata watoto wakati ambapo mtoto wako umemwekimisha ambaye amekuwa mkubwa ukimwambia fanya hiki anakataa unahisi vibaya sana kwa sababu unaona kana kwamba mtoto anafanya nini mtoto anakudharau hivyo ndivyo ilivyo mwanadamu anapokataa na anapoenda kinyume na mapenzi ya Mungu kwa hivyo heshimu Mungu ambaye aliyekuumba na umheshimu kwa njia zote enda kanisani kwa ajili ya kumwabudu Mungu 
Enda mahali ambapo kuna ubiliwa kwa ajili ya kumtukuza Mungu kwa sababu unastahili kuwa na heshima. Jambo la pili uheshimu kiumba kingine. Uheshimu ndugu yako, uheshimu danda yako, heshimu mpaka jirani. Kwa sababu wewe na yeye muliumbwa na mtu mmoja. Ukuwe mumeru, ukuwe mukikuyu, ukuwe mujaluo hata kama unatoka wapi. Sisi tuliumbwa na baba mmoja. Hebu nikaulize swali. Watu ambao wamezaliwa na mtu mmoja wanaitana na mna gani? Wanaitana? Sijasikia hapo vizuri. Wanaitana heitha dugu ama wanaitana danda kwa sababu wamezaliwa na mtu mmoja. So sisi wote usikubali kuona ndugu yako anateseka. Usikubali kumteza ndugu yako wala danda yako. Hata kama aumujui, hata kama aumujui. Tafadhali ni as long as ni mwanadamu. Ukimpata barabarani akiwa na shinda, naomba umsaidie kwa sababu ni mmoja katika familia ambao ni familia ya umbaji. Jambo lingine ni kwamba tunastahili kuwa na hutu. Hutu ni kumaanisha unaonea mwingine huruma. Wale ambao tuko hapa watoto, tunzeni wazazi wenu. Tunzeni wat, watoto wenu. Wale ambao ni ni, 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 ni ni wazazi pendeni watoto wenu. Kwa sababu kuna siku moja hautakuwa katika dunia hii. Ukweli ama uongo. Kuna siku hautakuwa katika dunia hii. Hebu nipeane mfano na mimi. Mimi kwetu tumezaliwa watoto watatu. Kwenu sijui ni wangapi. Na mtoto wa kwanza ni msichana. Na mnajua vile wasichana wanapendwa kama ni yeye peke yake nyumbani anapendwa. Na mimi ni mshada ni, ni kijana wa pili second born ambaye ni mwanaume. Na tena kuna kijana watatu ambaye ni mwanaume kama mimi. Na unajua last ni vile upendwa. Na kuambia kama uko last ni hapa naomba ujichunge sana. Kwa sababu hata wakati ambapo uko kwa makosa unaambiwa ai baba, ai mami, ai mudhonua, ai yani mpaka unasahau kana kwamba wewe unasahili ku behave. Lakini mimi naona msichana wa kwanza amependwa ndiye msichana katika boma. Na kijana wa mwisho amependwa kwa sababu ni last born. Lakini mimi second born akakuna mtu akona shughuli na mimi. Yaani nikapitia maisha magumu, magumu. Magumu. Lakini baadaye nikakuja kuelewa hivi. Baadaye nikakuja kuelewa hivi. Unapopitia maisha magumu ni Mungu anakuandaa kwa, ma- kwa maisha mazuri yanayokuja. So ni naomba hivi wale ambao tuko hapa tukiwa wazazi. Tafadhali kumbuka kuna wato, kuna wakati ambapo hautakuwa. Mahali nimezaliwa, mahali nimezaliwa kwa Wameru. Tuna kuna kamsema kanasema utile mwana kuanda wa mongo. Oh, pia nyinyi mnasema hivyo. Hebu sameni nisikie. Kwa hivyo ni kama sisi Watoto wote uliwabeba mbele. Sidhani kama kuna mtoto alibebwa nyuma. Hakuna. <laughs> kama amebebwa nyuma ni yule amezaliwa. Na kwa sababu hiyo wanahitaji kuonyeshwa upendo na uwapende wote kama watoto wako. Ili na wewe utakapokuwa mzee wa kupenda vile ulivyofanya nini? Wapenda. Hiyo ndiyo Biblia inasema hivyo. Kwa sababu Mungu alipenda mwanadamu Na sisi kama wazazi wa duniani tupende watoto ambao Mungu ametubariki na wao. Mungu atumetubariki na wao. E, sehemu hiyo nyingine ni kwamba <coughs> mstari e, mwanzo wa tatu mstari wa kwanza iko na maneno mazuri sana. Hapa ndipo kifo kiliingia katika 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 government katika serikali ya mbinguni 
kilianzishwa na mtu mmoja ambaye alikuwa ni kiumbe aliumbwa pamoja na Adamu na Hawa na akaumbwa lakini akaleta mambo mabaya katika serikali ya mbinguni msomaji nisomee fungu la kwanza na fungu la pili nasema mwanzo tatu mstari wa kwanza mhm mm basi nyoka alikuwa mwerevu kuliko wanyama wote wa mwituni yes mwitu aliyowafanya bwana mungu mhm mm akamwambia mwanamke yes eti hivi ndivyo alivyosema mungu msile matunda ya miti yote ya bustani ninaomba uachie hapo kwa sababu ninasoma kwa watu ambao wanajua kuna kiumbe kilikuwa kinaitwa nyoka huko kwenu kuna nyoka kweli watoto wandogo maybe hawajui nyoka ukienda kule kwetu nyoka ni wengi na ukiamua unaua nyoka unayepatana na yeye uwezi enda mahali ulikuwa unaenda sababu kutoka hapa mpaka pale nyoka ndiyo huyu unapita unaenda mpaka pale una, kuna ingine unapata barabara auoni kichwa wala mkia ni mwili uko barabarani unaruka tu unaenda unampata mpaka kwa kitanda amelala na unajua nyoka usipomuguza hawezi kukuuma ukipata kwa kitanda amelala na ulale kando mtalala mpaka asubuhi lakini vibaya uzunguke hivi umuguze atajiprotect unalala mpaka asubuhi unaamuka unaenda yeye unaamuka unaenda so hiki kiumbe akikuwa ni kiumbe kibaya kutoka zamani hapa naona wale watu wako pale kwa gari na uambiwe enda uniletea mkono wa ule kijana ako na nguo iko na ya checked hapo ulizangi swali ni kuenda na kuleta mkono swali ni baadaye mbona mnaniambia nilete mbona umesema tulete ni mpaka utii sheria so unapotumika kwa njia isiyo stahili unaweza kuleta rahana kubwa katika familia yako, katika maisha yako na katika kijiji ambacho mnaishi. Angalia nyoka alikilikuwa ni kiumbe kizuri lakini kikaingiwa na muovu shetani ambaye anaitwa Lucifer. Usikubali uone shetani, yani usitarajia uone shetani amekuja nyumbani kwa mguu hivi. Amekuja nyumbani kwa mguu hivi. Anatumia mwanadamu kama wewe. Anatumia viumbe vile ambavyo vitakufikia wewe umewahi ona shetani kwa, kwa macho lakini umewahi ona mtu ambaye ana BF kama shetani shetani anatumia watu na anamwambia enda uambie fulani mm -hmm. maneno yake yanaharibiwa na fulani kuna mtu ambaye anakutriga akiwa hapa kando ndio tunasema ya kwamba jichunge na kutumika vibaya mahali ambapo unaishi kwa sababu ukitumika vibaya kuna uwezekano maisha yako mwenyewe yaharibike so baada amekubali ametumika na nyoka na, na shetani ndio unaona mambo ilibadilika yake baada ya kundanganya ndamu na hawa wakaenda kinyume na mapenzi ya Mungu maisha ikabadilika na kukawekwa huadui mkubwa kwa sababu ya kutumika visivyo. Mnajuanga huadui? Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Mnajua huadui kweli? Uandui ni, ka, ni kama huo katikati ya nyoka na mwanadamu. Ni Mungu aliweka huadui. Ukiona nyoka hata kama akuje pande yako, si unakimbia wachana na wale ambao ni expert kuna wengine nao wako na moyo mgumu akiona nyoka hata akiingia wapi ni mpaka wapambane hata kama ameingia kwa shimo ni mpaka wapambane huo ni moyo mgumu wasipokuelewa nyoka anapoingia kwa shimo hawezi ingia kwa shimo na aende kwa sababu mbomo ya, ya, ya nyoka sio shimo anaingianga hivi lakini kicho inakuja inakuja pande pande ya nje Uandui ulipowekwa ndio maana unaona ukiona nyoka unatoroka na ni kiumba kiliumba kama wewe unapoweka uandui 
na wanadamu mnaoishi na wao ukimuona hata kama ni ndanda yako unafanya nini unatoroka uandui sio kitu kizuri kama kuna watu wako na uandui ninaomba muende muondoe katika jina la Yesu Bwana Yesu asifiwe Boma ambayo iko na uandui kijiji ambacho kiko na uandui kinakaa kana kwamba sio wanadamu wanabadilika e, kuna kaandiki kamoja nilisoma kaka <coughs> kuna kaandiki kamoja nilisoma siku moja kalisema kuna watu walifikiria kuna watu wa bure katika dunia hii mimi nimewaambia na zungumzia watu ambao tunaangaliana hivi kwa sababu ya maisha ya leo na maisha ya kesho wakaona kana kwamba kuna, kuna mtu ambaye ana maana hata wewe najua kuna mtu unaonanga maana unaona huyu ni bure Yaani una au mhesabu kama watu ukiambiwa uhesabu watu uwezi kumhesabu kama ni mtu hata hapa kuna watu Yeni. ukiambiwa ni hesabia watu kumi uwezi kumhesabu wengine ni waenda kazimu wanaopitia hapa wamebeba beba ma, mangunia wame, yani unaona kana kwamba sio watu wengine ni watu ambao ni watu ambao yani watoto ambao hawana wazazi wanaitangwa street children unaona kana kwamba sio watu na huyo ni mtoto alizaliwa na baba na mama kama wewe sasa siku moja mfalme alikuwa na msichana mmoja tuseme kama the, 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 the former president msichana tu mmoja mmoja peke yake na unajua sasa watoto wa wakubwa shinda yao sio pesa shinda ni vile ni jinsi ya kutumia pesa na siku moja akatangaza mtoto wangu amefikisha wakati wa kuolewa nataka kufanya interview ya yule ambaye anataka kumuoa Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Akasema mtoto wangu amefikisha wakati wa kuolewa, lakini siku fulani kutakuwa na interview ya yule ambaye atamuoa. So vijana wote wakuje na ikatangazwa kwa maredio, ikatangazwa kwa magazeti na ikatangazwa mpaka kwa runinga ulimwengu mzima. Unafikiria vijana walioenda kufanya interview walibeba nini? Eh? Eh? Ukiitwa kufanya interview na president ili uoe msichana wake utabeba nini? Naomba tuongee. Utabeba nini? Unaona kama walibeba nini? Kuna wengine walibeba certificate. Yaani amesoma mpaka doctorate na akabeba hivi. Na akasema sasa akiona vile nimesoma mpaka nikaenda Britain, mpaka nikonaisha nika handa hata nikubali kuwa msichana wake wengine hata hawana nguo nzuri wakaenda wakapima suti kwa sababu wanaenda kwa interview kwa sababu wanajiambia nikisimama hivyo na suti nzuri labda huyo mfalme atanikonsinda na anipatia msichana wake yani kila mtu alifikiria bila ataenda Mwenda wazimu naye ambaye aliona watu wakienda. Najua wale watu wakati mwingine hawaelewi. Na akaona wengine wakienda naye akawafuata kwa sababu alifikiria kuna chakula huko. Naomba nikuambie hakuna mtu wa bure. Na ile siku utasema huyu mtu ni wa bure utakuwa unamkososha una, una unamkosoa una Mungu. Wakaenda wote. Na walipoenda wote wakakusanyika hapo kila mtu amekuja kwa njia zake kuna wale ambao wamekondisha ndege kwa siku hiyo kwa sababu anajua akioa msichana wa mfalme hata yeye ni nani hata yeye ni mfalme kwani kuna mtu anachukia ana mali hakuna 
Ndiyo wao wamefika hapo, wamezingira hapo, wamekuja. Sasa msichana akatolewa na akawekwa hapo sasa. Akaambiwa sasa wote wakaambiwa ni wakati wa interview. Hapo kando na hii bomba ya huyu mzee alikuwa ameweka swimming pool mahali ambapo anaogelea wakati ambapo anataka kurelax. Sasa kwa hii siku hiyo akaweka mamba inaitwa kengangi. Mnahitaji akaweka mamba katika ile swimming pool lakini ile mamba ilikuanga ya plastic lakini ina ina inachezwa hivi na kompyuta hivi inaogelea ukiona unaona kama ni mnyama ako hai na akasema interview yangu ni yule ambaye ataogelea kutoka pande hii mpaka pande ile ingine hiyo ndiye atakaye chukua mchana wangu sasa watu hapo wakaanza kupiga maasara. Mimi nilikondisha ndege. Hata ajaangalia ndege yangu. Mimi niko na certificate, nimesoma hata hakuna mahali anaangalia certificate. Lakini akasema interview ni yule ambaye ataogelea. Unajua wote wamesimama pembeni. Wamesimama pembeni hapa ya swimming pool. Akijaribu kuingia hivi anaona vile mamba amefungua mdomo hivi anasema hata ni afadhali nirudi nikaoa yule wa kijijini kuliko huyu wa mfalme <laughs> sababu sijui kama nikiingia hapa nitatoka sasa yule naye mwanda wazimu akasimama pale pale yeye yeah, aelewe yeah, kile kinaendelea lakini vijana wengine hapa wakasema wacha tufanye testing ya hii mamba na hii kijana bure yani wanamuona nikana kwamba sio mtu wacha tu, wacha tumurushe kwa kwa maji atristi ya kuliwe kuliwe kabla ya kuliwe aishe na mimi niingia ni confuse mamba ndio nitokee pande ile ingine. umewahi simama hivi mtu akuja nyuma mtu akuja nyuma ategue kama ukisimama hivi lakini usiende kufanya hivyo nataka kufanya hivyo fanyia mke wako huko nyumbani lakini sio kila mtu amesimama hivi ukuja nyuma ukimwonga hapa na, na magoti hivi nini kinatendeka si anaanguka <laughs> ni kutegua ukitaka kutegua tegua mke wako au mume wako endeni mjaribu muone so vijana wakakuja nyuma wakategua yule yule kijana hivi choa na akaingia ndani ya maji choa na kwa sababu amesikia nyuma kuna maandui yeye akaogelea akaogelea kwa sababu anaona ngambo hiyo kuna watu na akaogelea wanaangojea akuliwe mamba anakimbizana naye akanakimbizana naye wakasema wacha ukione lakini bandaye akatokea pande ile ingine shangwa na vigeregere ho oh, oh, wacha akione tulimukanya tulimukanya wacha akione lakini akatokea pale pale hivi farume akasema nimepata mshindi atakaye hoa msichana wangu na kumbe wazimu zingine ni kwa sababu ya umasikini unajua kuna wazimu zingine sababu ya umasikini unakuwa wazimu sababu ya depression na stress yani huyu kijana yeye haelewi anasema mimi kama kuna kitu nataka nijue ni nani alinirusha kwa kwa mamba kwa maji Yaani yeye haoni mazuri yale ambao yameandaliwa. Yeye anataka kujua nani alifanya nini. Lakini I want to tell you the truth. Umati uliona huyo mtu ni wabure. Lakini ndiye aliyehoa msichana wa mfalme na akaishi kiufalme kwa sababu ni mtoto wa mfalme. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Usione kama mtu ni wabure na umudharau kwa sababu aujui kesho. Hata ukisoma kitabu cha cha mwanzo kuna kijana anaitwa Yusufu si mnamkumbuka alidharauliwa na akaonekana ni wabure lakini baadaye alikuja kuokoa familia yake na akajitambulisha wote walitoa machozi Kuna mwimbaji aliimba Waria ni dharau atalisalimia kwa heshima Aliimba aji 
Aliye ni dharau siku moja atanisalimia kwa heshima. Kuna kawimbo na sikianga kwa redio. Ni vile sijui kuimba vizuri lakini najua maneno. Na usiombe Mungu wa kusalimia kwa heshima ndio uwashonore. Ni Mungu akusaidie. Uchukulie ndugu yako, ndanda yako ni wa maana. By the way maandiko inasema ni wa maana kuliko nani? Wewe. Wewe. Najua mimi niliwambia sina mambo mengi na ninahubiria wale ambao wako hai. Ninajua siku ya Ijumapili, siku ya Ijumatatu e, na Saturday wahubiri wamekuwa wakiwahubiria na kuwapatia pole kwa sababu ya kifo. Mimi nahubiri kwa wale ambao wako hai. Na sehemu ya mwisho ni sehemu ya kwamba sehemu ya mwisho nikimalizia ili tufanye hombi kwa ajili ya kumaliza. Eh Kitabu eh, <coughs> Kitabu cha muhubiri Kitabu cha muhubiri tatu Mstari wa 18 Mstari wa 19 na mstari wa 20 Naomba unisomee msomaji wangu mstari wa 18 Wafu uenda wapi Eh nikasema muhubiri tatu mstari wa 18 Yes Nikasema moyoni mwangu Yes ni kwa sababu ya wanadamu He. ili Mungu awajaribu nao waone ya kuwa wao wenyewe mm-hmm. wafanana na wanyama. Yes. Kwa maana linalowatukia wanadamu mm-hmm. linawatukia wanyama. Yes. Jambo moja rawatukia mm-hmm. anavyokufa huyu yes. ndivyo anavyokufa huyu. Ehe. Naam. Yes. Wote wanayo pumzi moja Ehe. wala mwanadamu hana kitu cha kup- cha kumpita mnyama yes. kwa maana yote ni ubatiri yote ni ubatiri mimi sehemu ambayo niko na haja nayo ni sehemu ya mwisho did you know mambo yote ambayo tunafanya katika dunia hii uwe unapata mshahara wa kiasi gani uwe umesoma mpaka wapi uwe unajulikana kiasi gani uwe unaishi nyumba gani mwisho wetu wote ni ile nyumba ni ya 4 by ni 4 by ni 6 by hapo ndio mwisho wetu nyumba yetu sisi wote ni mwisho ni 4 by 6 hata kama unaendesha gari gani hata kama unaendesha V8 najua V8 siku hizi imekuja kama we ni mulevi hata ukiingia ukijaribu kugurumisha aigurumi sababu haitaki nonsense <laughs> paka utafuta driver ukae nyuma akuendeshe na hata kama unaendesha kama ile vict gari ya mama na watu wa kawaida mwisho wetu sisi wote ni 4 by 6 ndio mwili anasema ya kwamba ni ubatiri mambo tunayofanya katika dunia hii anasema ya kwamba kuna siku itafika mwisho upende usipende ukweli ama uongo umeona watu wengi walikuwa ni wakubwa na ukimuita kwa sherehe kama hii hawezi kuja kwa sababu yeye anapitia juu anapitia angani anapitia kila mahali akishindwa kuna ni watu gani wanaishi katika msitu huu lakini atakapofika kwa ile 4 by 6 atakataa kweli So ninaomba malingo tuweke chini na tukubali Mungu aongee nasi na tukubali Mungu asimame nasi na tukubali Mungu atubandilishe katika jina la Yesu Hata mahangaiko ya hii dunia kama una upendo wa Mungu mwisho wako 4 by 6 Nasemaga hata ni afadhali mwenye ameenda leo. Ni afadhali yule ambaye tunayempumzisha leo. Kisoma muhubiri tisi nasema eh nasema sababu inasema ya kwamba eh, siku ya kufa ni heri kuliko ya kuzaliwa kwa sababu ya kuzaliwa uliletwa katika majaribu mengi 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 mengi. 
lakini ya kufa umepumzishwa mambo mengi wale ambao tumebaki nyuma ninaomba tujiandae kwa sababu siku moja mhubiri amesema vile unaona wanyama wakifa hivyo ndivyo hata mwanadamu anafanya nini anakufa hivyo hivyo lakini tofauti ni vile mwanadamu akulangwi nyama nyama akifa unasherekea sherekea lakini mwisho ni pale pale mwisho ni pale pale na ukishajua hivyo ni kuambia Mungu mimi ile siku nitakao pumzika by the way hebu niwaulize leo tume tumepumzisha ndanda yetu pale nani angependa kuwa next nani angependa tumuzika kesho ama kesho kutwa kama kuna kitu kinaogopia yani watu wanaogopa ni kifo hata yule shosho anaendanga na, na mkongojo hivi akitaka kuruka barabara ni mpaka angalie huku na ni mpaka angalie huku sababu gani ni mtu mmoja tu niliona ambaye alikuwa amesema hata kufa mimi nishakufa hata kama ako hai wakaenda wakatekwa na, na wezi wajambazi alikuwa akienda hospitali gari ya abiria kule kwetu wakatekwa na na wezi wako na buduki wakawaambia kila mtu alale wote wakalala yeye akabaki akasema mimi silali wezi wakamuuliza mbona ulali akawaambia mimi silali nililala usiku mimi silali tena wakaambiwa inua mkono ulala na uinue mikono hivi akasema mimi siinui akaambiwa mzee tutakuwa wewe akawaambia hata mkiniua mtanisaidia naenda hospitali na sioni kama nitarudi so mkiniua nitarudi nyumbani mapema kuliko kwenda hospitali niongezee kwa watoto wangu bell wacha tu muniiwe saa hii nirudi nyumbani haraka wezi wakaangalia ni mtu wa aina gani huu wakasema tutapoteza munda hapa kama hatujapora tuachane naye tupole wengine na twende akawaambia hata mkiwa pora mimi nitasema nitawasema sababu na waona mimi nitawasema na wacha nipigie askari simu niwaambie kuna watu wanapora wengine wakati huo watu wote wamevua nguo Wame, najua nguo ndio kuna pesa ukitaka kuiba mtu haraka wacha kugonga yeye mwambie kupe nguo si nguo ndio na simu iko na ki, kila kitu lakini usiende kufanya hivyo. Wote kwa kwa gari bila kujali kuna watoto, kuna adhoni. Ku... Wote waliposikia nitasema kasema leteni nguo sasa. Na kuna mtu aliguzwa lakini hakuna mtu alibaki na nguo isipokuwa yule mzee peke yake. Na akawaambia unaona hivi mmechukua hizo nguo, hizo 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 hizo. Amunijui. Amunijui. Alipowaambia awamujui wakaanza kupora haraka 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 na ngozi karundishwa kwa sababu awamujui. Wakaenda na pesa na simu na kila kitu. Lakini kwa sababu ya vile walikuwa wamesituka najua nguo ikirushwa na mlikuwa na wezi na wamewaambia wacha tukuja round 2 ulikuwa unaamuka ile nguo utachukua unachomoka nayo. Ungeona mwanaume amechomoka na baika ya mama anafika nyumbani nayo na elewi kile kinaendelea kwa sababu gani hakuna mtu anapendanga kifo ila kinakuja bila kufanya nini Bwana Yesu asifiwe Sehemu ya pili ya masishi So tunaenda kwa yule mama nimemalizana na sehemu ya walio hai sasa so naenda katika sehemu ya yule mama ambaye yako pale lakini kabla niende hapo sehemu ya kwamba kulingana na maandiko na mafundisho ambayo tumepewa 
Bro, dhambi ndiye inaye kufa. Hicho ni hiyo ni fungu la 20. Ndugu yangu ama ukufunga nisomee pale. 20. Wanadamu atukufi ni kulala tunalala, lakini roho inayotenda dhambi haina matumaini ya ufufuo mara ya pili. Ndiye inaye kufa. Nasemaji yeah. 20 wote huenda mahali pamoja yes wote hutoka katika mavumbi mm-hmm. na hata mavumbini hurudi tena 20 20 na moja ehe oh, sawa ni nani ajue kama roho ya binadamu huenda juu mm-hmm. na kama roho ya mnyama huenda chini mm-hmm. hivyo nikaona ya kwamba hakuna jema kupita mwanadamu yes. kuzifurahia kazi zake ehe. kwa sababu hii hili ni fungu lake mashauri Asanti. Mashauri matamu. Mashauri matamu sana. Baanda ya kifo. Niliwambia sina munda. Mambo mengi ya meubiliwa wakati wa maombolezi. Mavumbini tulitoka. Na mavumbini nipo tutakapo rundi. Kitabu cha muanzo tatu mustari wa wakumina tisa. Wadha saronike. Nibuyangu tuende pale. Sababu ya munda ili tukaweza kumalizia e, sehemu ya pili katika mahubiri yetu. E, wa Thessalonike wa kwanza ina mstari wa 13. Nasema nene. Lakini ndugu hatutaki msije msijue habari zao waliolala mauti. Mhm. Msije mkahuzunika kama na wengine wasio na matumaini. Ehe. Maana ikiwa tuamini ya kwamba Yesu alikufa, mm-hmm. akafufuka Yes. Hivyo hivyo na hao waliolala katika Yesu Ehe. Mungu atawaleta pamoja naye. Asante sana. Paulo anasema hivi na anafundisha wanadamu kama sisi siku ya leo anawapatia tumaini la kipekee. Na tumaini hilo ndilo napenda ni wape wale ambao tunaangaliana hivi amewaambia kuna kitu angependa tuelewe wale ambao tuko na imani ninazungumzia wa Kristo siku ya leo wa Kristo tunaosoma Biblia tunakumbuka na tunaelewa ya kwamba Yesu alikufa na akafanya nini na akafufuka kwa hivyo tuna uzima ndani ya Yesu Kristo uzima unapatikana ndani ya Yesu Kristo peke yake sio kwa utajiri sio kwa maarifa na sio kwa hekima ya dunia hii na kwa sababu alikufa na akafufuka wote watakao kufa wakiwa ndani ya Yesu Kristo nao watafufuliwa vivyo hivyo alivyo fufuka bwana Yesu asifiwe Yesu alishinda mauti kwa nini anasema watakao kufa wakiwa ndani ya Kristo inazungumzia wote ambao watakao lala usingizi wa mahuti wakiwa wameweka maisha yao ndani ya Kristo watafufuliwa wakati Yesu atakaporudi na wacha niwaambie ukiandaa inasema ya kwamba sio wote watakao kufa wakati Yesu atakuwa anarudi anaweza rudi leo anaweza kuja kesho anaweza kuja kesho kutoa lakini mwili ambao unao kufa ndio utakaye baandilishwa in a twinkling of an eye ndio utakao baandilishwa kwa sababu mwili huu wa kufa hauwezi kumuona Mungu na uwezi kumkaribia Mungu kwa sababu ya utakatifu wa Mungu na atakapo baandilishwa wale ambao waliokufa wale ambao waliolala wakiwa ndani ya Yesu wafufuliwe kwa ufufuo wa kwanza na washikane na wale ambao watakatifu wa Mungu. Na watakatifu wa Mungu sio kwa njina, ni kwa matendo. Watu ambao wamejitolea, wamesema mimi Mungu sina uwezo na uniwezeshe. So ombi langu ni kwamba siku ya leo kila mmoja hapa atubu dhambi zake. Kwa sababu wende ikawa we ndio utazikwa kesho ama kezo kutwa ama siku hiyo nyingine tubu dhambi zako tengeneza maisha yako ili Yesu akukubali Yesu akai mahali ambapo kuna mesheni unajua mesheni ama ni kikamba mesheni 
Yaani unapoenda kwa jirani au uweze muambia mambo ya kumjenga ni mambo ya kubomoa. Yesu hawezi kubali na hawezi kama mahali ambapo kuna ulevi. Kama we ni mlevi utaona Yesu kwa ba. Utaona Yesu mahali ambapo kunafanywa mambo ya sio faa. Lakini mahali ambapo kuna somo wa neno la Bwana. Mahali ambapo kuna amani. Mahali ambapo kuna utulivu. Roho wa Mungu anazunguka pale na akizungumza na watoto wake na anawatia nguvu na anawaongoza mpaka ile siku atarudi na tuchukue tuende mbinguni. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Niombi langu vile tulivyo tuonekane katika makao ya mbinguni. Mungu atubariki sana. E, ninaomba tu tu anaomba la familia wale ambao wako wachache tutakuwa na ombi la familia uhajiri ya kuwatia nguvu so nitawauliza kwa njia ya heshima wakaweza kusimama ili tufanye ombi la kipekee kwa ajili ya Mungu kuwapatia nguvu kwa ajili ya Mungu kuwapatia uwezo kwa ajili ya kuendelea na maisha haya ya duniani naomba wasimame Santi, 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 Santi. Wale ambao ni wa familia hii ni naomba wasimame. Wale ambao wana uhusiano wowote na hii familia ni naomba wasimame. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Eh mwinjilisti ndondo ni naomba uchukue microphone kuna mmoja anakuja pale yule ambaye aliyesoma andivi nakumbuka tukimpatia juzi tuliambiwa ni mjukuu si hiyo ni wa familia e, tukimpatia tuliambiwa ni mjukuu sio tuliambiwa yeye ni mjukuu akuje tuombe kwa pamoja Ya Thank you, thank you. Tu tutaomba tuta mkuu mmesimama hivyo. Mkuu mmesimama hivyo. So na kabla hatujaomba tunawapatia pole zetu kama kanisa la Adventista. Mungu azindi kuwapatia nguvu kifo ambacho kimewanyang'anya mmoja wenu mpenda wenu ninaomba niwaambie akitaishi milele munda usio kuwa mrefu Yesu anakuja kukimaliza na ufalme wa Mungu usimame usio kuwa na kifo milele na milele Mungu atubariki sana so evangelist tunaomba utuombe eh ambia familia hii Mungu awapatie nguvu na simame na wao Tuka bere yaku olege mubi wito kora ha na kugo sharetu ale yaku ito do ale wa tora na na yugi ne yagu kine hi dale bere yaku toroga mete hamwe na ale ya mete ino na mamua shiro de ole ketie ko huroka ne shia na shia ke no na ale ya ma shia la ne iro na ale ya mete ino to ama iga mo ko ine maku na jira ya mo anya to do ne o na omodo ni oi hali ya hute tio ni uhoroyo na ajira shio the mwadhani kwa dhina bea na kumaiga mwako ini maku toke hoya dhaye waku uriota geta uro neruga ya omodo uriota liye utuweke wako kia na hado goro ine shiao na negeza matuweke ya kukia no horeli na kuiga niradhini waku dhina bea na kumomere ya na kumanyiti lera muno makiri ya shia na shia ke tiri ya mana ashaka ya ni udo wago tigua ni mami wao Udhina abe na kumanyitira na kumatiri lera ni todo wa ugo shiwari ito wale yaku. Udhina abe na kumanyitida ni anarugaru wa kuru wa wedo na negeza onadhuza wodo yu makaugate ni mashamanetie na we ni omo omire ilio kama hehinya na okama nyitida ni ya wero ni todo wa ugo shiwari ito wale yaku. Maodo ine moza na ikiro ine shio za tuare kereli ya halewe tuwene wa igu anani oko higia. Tugera ile hali Jesu au shari wa dhiku ito tuwa hoya ona tuwekia. Amen. Amen. Mwadhani ya Gosho, mwanaesu wa sifiwe.
mtu ambaye yuko na mkono na hauna ha, ushida bwana wabariki ah uh, hamad itu ajita wa samuel kinuvia na jesu ni mwadhani na muonokia wa ngoro yako ah uh, nengado nyingi turashokia uyo huru kete diamu itaganti na kuri mahida sunday zido kagada uma kanitha toko katukagia na ngwatanilo nao na tukahoya hamwe ugwa ri ongo kwe mundu ura watigirwo agagaite nenie tondu ni twagia na ihinda riega muno ona ria kurikira kiugo ni kia ngai ndudu cio muthenya wa umuthi ni ngatho tukumushokeria makiria kamiteo irambiririe na thiko ithatu na igakinyia wiro ria ikinyitie muthenya wa umuthi gona ni hinya wa ngai ngatho cia mbere ni icio cia ngai witu ni tondu waria arabangire mipango ya uhoro uyu na riu mwiri urorete gucoka tirini ngai ucio niwe twagiriwe ni guturira joke joke ria ngatho muno 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 kanitha ucio wa 70 day uria ukuwete murigoyi we wothe ukaruta wira uhinyetie na ngai witu amurathime na mwike wega ni tondu kanitha hindi ciothe niguo urutaga wira utegucuthiriria utekorana utanoka no wikuo ukaruta wira ni tondu ni wa Jesu Kristo ni undu ucio ngai amwike wega na amurathime na riu joke joke ria ngatho bado andu aria mahotire guka na thiko icio ithatu na moka na ngari ciao macoka mathie okugira mwiri na maurehe haha ngai amurathime na amwike wega muno makiria na riu ningi ndingiriganirwo ona ni aria marahariririe gikaro giki tukuiga mwari wa ithe witu ni kihariririo wega na ni gikucoka ni kihariririo makiria riu tiri wacoka wa waikio kwoguo ngai amurathime amwike wega mundu wothe utigire undu wake na oka guku ndono kwoguo tuhu ni tondu ngai ni onire no nawe ni agaguthiera na ni agakuigua mahinda maria ugakorwo hatikaini kwoguo ngai wa muoyo amurathime na amwike wega ona cio mara ukire dagika ya muthia na mahota ku ruta gishuje ona kiria kirahotire na ku kwa bahame yo i hau thutha ni tondu kaida kau kanini ni karone kire o kindu mwathani ya heanire kwoguo ngai ya murathime na kamiti iri ya raikarire thi isiko icio ithatu leu ni ndirona uhotani munene ni tondu ona Jesu aikarire kavuri ni thiko ithatu no ya gatatu akiriuka na uhotani ni undu ucio na ithu muthenya wa umuthi turagana uhotani ni tondu mwire gukinya guku ni kiama kwoguo ngai ya mwike wega na amurathime ngiuka kurikia mucioyo na mishiere ya gitwana thie tuthia tuko igati ngai ni aliuka kumurora no ihinda riri mucioyo ni ene nguga ni aliuka kurora no riri ni dramu tuma mahoya ni tondu tutangenyitirira ari amatigwa na mahoya no morwo ni hinya ni tondu matigwa mishiere na cia ndigwa na cia na cia ndigwa ni cia mundu wothe kwoguo wathie na ku dukai kurora maundu maria mahana toguo muhujia oiga ati mundu ucio aikanirio iriaini bahati baya ni tondu we dedaga no ni ahotire kugera hau na kihikia mwari wa muthamaki kwoguo na wari atu atigirwo thini wa gikaro giki andu aitu damuhoya turugame na mahoya tururikana mucioyo biyo na ari amanyitite itemi kamiteria iranyitire wiro uyu tondu ni ndonekana oithia handu haraihu Adu aya ciana ici cingi kora ningwe ciria niyo tukoria kwoguo ni ni tondu ni murahota ku communicate na aria mena na ku na mukahota ku kinyiria undu toyo ona family nao mari oguku kamiteo mungi gaikarathi mugeria kuthondekerera tondu ni mwagirirwe ni korora ati ni ithu twatigirwo ciana ici na riu ni twagirirwe ni gucinyiterera otoria twahota na tondu tutiyohota gucihita guku uri maru Maruta wira mundu wothe muhoye ngai aririkana mucioyo ona mishiere yange nayo itigitwo tondu ithe na nyina ni marikia kwehera kwoguo ni ciana cia ndigwa ni mwana waku we wi muoyo bwana sifiwe na wona we kwoguo kirathimo kya ngai ni gigugukinyirira kwoguo ngai amwike wega na amurathime na ngwihoka ati tithero ni muguthi kuhoya niguo yado niguo kanitha kwoguo kanitha wira mwega murutite Dikoi shia idato motiga tigi dili ginyaje swaga shoka. 
kwaguo nete wake mune cia naishi naishi cia na kou mushicho kanirelie na nigetha cikare to uria kiugo kia ngai yendaga na nigetha ona magatueka agai amuoyo ngai wa muoyo amurathime na mweke wega na tondu litietagira muthamaki na nidana thie kundu ngaigua uhoro wa ngatho igicho kio nginya ngano ga dikwenda kumunogia bwana sifiwe ni ndirona ni murarora matu na matu ni mamwathani na ithu turi yake kwaguo ngai witu mugicoka mishie yanyu mucoke na irathi mucia ngai na ngai amwike wega na ni njui ati ni tuguthie kuhoya bwana sifiwe ngai amwike wega na amurathime na uri aitana cokeria ngatho na hari undu wikite onawe uigwe wi hau na ni ukurathimo ni ithe witu kwaguo ngai amwike wega na amurathime thank you Asanteni, asanteni. Hebu tuombe ili tuanze huduma. Tuombe. Baba wetu wa mbinguni, tunakuja mbele zako masaa haya tukishukuru na kuinua jina lako kwa sababu ya wema wako. Baba tumefika katika huduma ya kuteremwisha mwili mahali ambapo umeandali, umeandaliwa anapa kupungojea mara ya pili. Tunaomba tunapoanza huduma hii Baba ukaweze kutuongoza na maamuraka yote uliyotupa Mungu tunaomba ikaweze kufanya kazi katika sehemu hii. Tunaomba utuongoze tunapohanza mpaka mwisho ndilo ombi letu kwa imani katika jina la Yesu tunaomba na kuamini. Amen. So tunaomba eh anayehusika 
uh, aguze mahali inaguzwa iteremuke uh, tutasoma fungu linap, uh, jeneza linapoteremka katika kitabu cha ufunuo moja mstari wa kwanza na kuendelea kisha nikaona bingu mpya na inchi mpya kwa maana bingu za kwanza na inchi ya kwanza zimekwisha kupita wala hapana bahari tena nami nikaona mji ule mtakatifu Yerusalemu mpya ukishuka kutoka mbinguni kwa Mungu umewekwa tayari kama bibi harusi aliyekwisha kupambwa kwa mumewe nikasikia sauti kubwa kutoka katika kile kiti cha enzi ikisema tazama maskani ya Mungu ni pamoja na wanadamu naye atafanya maskani yake pamoja nao nao watakuwa watu wake naye Mungu mwenyewe atakuwa pamoja nao naye atafuta kila chozi katika macho yao wala mauti haitakuwapo tena wala maombolezo wala kilio wala maumivu hayata kuwapo tena kwa kuwa mambo ya kwanza yamekwisha kupita na yakatie akatie juu ya kile kiti cha enzi akasema tazama na yafanya yote kuwa mapya akaniambia andika ya kwamba maneno hayo ni yamini na kweli amen asanti eh msijali mtu mkubwa akizikwa kuna nyesha sababu ni mibaraka pia asanti asanti inaomba familia wachache waje ili tusaidiane kwa ajili ya watu anzishie kuzika tuwasaidie unipatie mchanga na kijiko sawa sawa najua mahali popote kuna mvua e, mvua ndiyo uwezi fanya kichwa ngumu kama inanyesha mpaka uiondokee e, ndugu zangu na nanda zangu kama vile kitabu kimesomwa munda usio mrefu machozi ya kifo na maumivu ya ulimwengu munda usio mrefu Yesu atakuja na atashughulikia na atapanguza kifo akitaendelea milele e, katika kitabu cha mwanzo tatu e, kitabu cha mwanzo tatu na kwa sababu tumepata mwaburi tunaweza kusomewa sasa e, so sawa kitabu cha mwanzo tatu mstari wa 19 inasema ya kwamba kwa sababu mwili ulitoka mavumbini mwisho mwisho utakuja kuruni mavumbini na kwa sababu ya mamlaka ambao tumeruhusiwa na Mwenyezi Mungu na hata na kanisa letu la Adventista tunaamini ndanda yetu alitoka katika mavumbi na siku ya leo mavumbini tunamurundisha mpaka angoje tarumbeta ile itakapopigwa na Mungu amwamushe. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Thank you so much. So wanao tusaidia kuleta mchanga, tunaomba waendelee. Thank you.